What are you eating? Lobster. Boston lobster, right? Boston lobster. Mm. Is it good? It's really creamy and then like... What's inside? Egg and cheese. Eggs and cheese? Mm. That sounds awesome. That's amazing. Absolutely fantastic. Mm. You got the whole piece. You're gonna love me like no one's loved me. Come rain or come shine. You're gonna love me like no one's loved me. Come rain or come shine. You're gonna love me. Like no one's loved me Come rain or come shine Hey Lowen, this is Lowdy6 here with another video and we're here today with Vivi to talk about one of our favorite things in the entire world and that is all-you-can-eat buffets. To me, I feel like all-you-can-eat buffets represent the utmost opulence and desire for savings that so many Americans crave, right? Americans love a good deal, but they also love to stuff their fat faces. I mean, that's why we have an obesity ep epidemic, let's be honest, right? Did you notice that when you are in America? About what? <laughs> People being fat? They're definitely being bigger than us. I'll actually, uh, we'll, we'll answer this in a nice way. Were you ever hungry in America? No. <laughs> that was one of the issues, wasn't it? The portion is way too big. So why would you need to go to an all-you-can-eat buffet if the portions are already that big? Doesn't make any sense, does it? So in America, we have a lot of choices for all you can eat buffets. It goes all the way down to like the really, really kind of low level ones, which is like old country buffet, fried chicken, mashed potatoes, all you can eat, like stuff you don't really want to eat that much of, but you know, there's plenty of, plenty of choice there. And it goes all the way up to kind of the places, the, the harbors of um, depressed gamblers that kind of, you know, go and spend their money in, on opulent buffets after they waste all their money in Las Vegas, right? Mm -hmm. It's a big standard, but I, I feel like the most iconic the most iconic all-you-can-eat buffet is definitely the Chinese all-you-can-eat buffet, right? And I don't know how Chinese food became synonymous with all-you-can-eat, but I feel like it's because Chinese people, and you know this, you guys have an eye for business. When you saw these fat, porker Americans that didn't want to spend too much money on some food, you created this massive kind of establishment for people to go, you know, basically like pigs at the trough, <laughs> feed their face for about five bucks, you know, for lunch and about maybe about eight bucks for dinner. And I'm guilty of this. I ate at all you can eat Chinese buffets all the time. It's awful. And you keep tricking me to go there. First it's like, oh, let's try some Chinese buffet. When I'm not there, before, I've never been there before, I said, okay. And then I refused to do that because it's so disgusting. It's not even Chinese food. Yeah, you said like, no, no, no. You have all different kinds. It's international restaurant. Oh, that's a good point. Now, you know how you can go on Wikipedia to find out like the demographics of a city? So for example, the demographics of my city, it's like 12% black or something, 3% Asian. 77% white. You don't actually have to use Wikipedia to check the racial makeup or demographics of a city. All you have to do is look at the local Chinese buffet <laughs> and look at the name, right? Now, if you go to like place some neighborhoods where it's all Asian people uh, outside of LA or something, the, a lot of the Chinese restaurants will have fully Chinese names. So it's just the Chinese characters because mm -hmm. only Chinese people are probably gonna go there and they can read the characters, right? Mm -hmm. You know, you're in like a kind of you know, mixed place or ethnically diverse place with some Asians, if it's like a play on words, like uh, there's a restaurant in New York City called Homey, right? Homey. But it's H-O-M-A-Y. <laughs> makes, it may, it's a little bit of a joke, because in Cantonese that means delicious, mm -hmm. right? But in English it kind of looks like a dude's name or something, right? Mm. But you can tell you're in the middle of like whitewashed Kansas, where they've never seen a Chinese person before, which we were, right? <laughs> they were very friendly, right? Mm. But to be honest, like, they weren't the most tolerant of people. Do you remember we were in that restaurant and that old lady was like basically counting pennies to give a tip? I remember her saying, well, Martha's daughter's dating one of them black boys. Like it was some sort of concern, right? And their local buffet was called International Buffet because I feel like, and I, I'm quoting someone that doesn't exist, but I feel like maybe Jim down the, at the car dealer or the car mechanic shop, right? He wants to eat Chinese food, but he doesn't want to go down there and eat none of them dogs or cats and my egg rolls, right? Like one of those guys. So they call it like an international buffet. I promise you, you want to stay away from Chinese buffets that serve pizza. No Chinese <laughs> buffet should ever serve 
pizza. I'm dead serious. <laughs> Stay away from that place. I'll, I'll be honest with you. The reason when we went on our honeymoon across the entire country, the reason I would stop at some of these buffets sometimes because I miss Chinese food. I love Chinese they food. They are not Chinese food. I understand. They are slop. They are <laughs> something that you will never want to eat. I understand. I'm aware of this, That's baby. That's not Chinese food. Don't insult my food. We know and we love and we hate Chinese buffets in America. That's not the point of this vi video, right? I love Chinese food. We're gonna get hey. we're gonna get copyright infringement, <laughs> Vivi. You're doing everything to sabotage this channel. <laughs> so Stop. Funny. So I want to ask you, Vivi, because you're the resident China expert, right? Is all you can eat or buffet style eating a thing in China? I don't think so. It's like fairly recent thing. But not we're not gonna lie. There are buffets here in China, and that's actually we went to go visit a Chinese buffet in China in that China? served all different kinds of foods, right? Because going to the buffet in China is not like, oh, I'm going to go get full for five bucks, right? Yeah, most of them are fancy, like a five-star hotel and good buffet. You don't have to stay at the hotel to eat there. They have a re It's different. This is actually really confusing. In China, hotel doesn't mean a place you sleep. It's usually a building that contains luxury things, right? Mm -hmm. And most hotels have a restaurant. And it's not like the hotel lobby type restaurant you get in America at Five Star Hotels. It's a separate restaurant. Yeah. It's a restaurant. Mm -hmm. Maybe a lot of the people staying at the hotel will eat there, but a lot of people will go there even if they're not staying at the hotel. It's, mm -hmm. a, it's a restaurant, right? Mm -hmm. And most Five Stars or Four Star Hotels will have a pretty decent Western buffet, as they call it, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So even in the small third tier city that we live in, we found that there's probably three or four different Western buffets here. Yeah, it is. And not, not only are they like kind of fancy or like have, cater to rich people, mm -hmm. they actually have a lot of times Western chefs, like, you know, people from the respective countries, whatever the hotel chain comes from. Yeah. They also have uh, live entertainment from Westerners as well or foreigners in general. And at the one that we went to, we had, there was a Filipino singer there mm -hmm. singing mm -hmm. English songs. And I'll be honest with you, you might jump, the, jump to conclusions because you want to compare it to Chinese buffets in America, but it was unbelievable. It was unreal. You can't even compare that. They're not even comparable. It's like one is slob, one is actual delicious heaven. I right. mean, like, how can you compare that? I mean, we went to this buffet, like I said, in this pretty, it's, it's pretty poor city in compared to like Shenzhen yeah, or Beijing or something. It's very poor. Mm -hmm. But this place was incredible. You had things like um, wine. We had wine freely poured at our table. We had all you can drink beer. We had all different kinds of steaks. They had a prime rib with a guy cutting it for you. Mm -hmm. They had oysters on the half shell, shucked right in front of you. Some of the best sashimi I've ever had. Wasn't it good? Mm. It was absolutely incredible. Like super fresh, super good. Do you remember what my dad did? What did he do? I don't remember. You don't remember? After I mixed with the like soy sauce and uh, what's it called? Wasabi. Wasabi, and then he dip it, try to be nice and give it everyone, and he stack it on our steak. Oh yeah, that's that's <laughs> a funny thing about if you eat Chinese style, and that's actually something I want to come into. What kind of people go into these buffets? Do people that specifically want to go eat like Italian food or French food or Western food go to these buffets? No, I mean like. Especially in our third tier city, absolutely not. Like a lot of people, they are not going to those restaurants because they love Western food. They go there, it's because of the environment, because right. of the food quality, because it's just a good, like, a good thing to do. I mean, like when there's things like apple smoked lamb on offer and cheese platters from all over Europe and different salamis, prosciutto, uh, uh, Spanish hams, olives. Uh, beautiful salads, right? You also had things like noodle bars and stuff mm -hmm. that catered to like they can build their custom noodles, which is pretty cool too. I found a lot of the Chinese customers there, well, most of them were Chinese, other than the Westerners in business meetings. Mm -hmm. They were choosing the Chinese food over the Western food, despite it predominantly being Western food, right? So if that wasn't enough, when we were at this uh, Western buffet, mm -hmm. we uh, saw, I saw this chocolate fondue fountain. Mm -hmm. And so there's this beautiful like soft jazz from this Filipino guy in the background. And then there's this fondue fountain and, and freshly baked pastries and cakes. And it was gorgeous. And guess what? All of this with like, you know, fancy waiters wearing tuxedos and stuff. All of this, all you can eat, fancy, fancy food from all around the world that's freshly prepared every single day costs $15 per person. When you compare that to like Uncle Ho's back alley, you know, Chinese buffet, in the middle of America, it costs like eight bucks. Yeah, 
yeah, that's a little bit more expensive. It's about twice the price, but the the quality comparison is mind blowing. The Plus, value you, you get, it's got to be like a hundred dollars worth of food I ate. You can't even, yeah, you basically in the slop Chinese buffet restaurant, you can't even eat like lobster, cheese lobster. Yeah, we had Boston cheese filled lobster. Oh, so And they were delicious. freshly cooked for mwah, us. Mwah, mwah. They weren't in like a, they weren't in a big pan. You know, like when you get those big pans of slop food, mm. they freshly cooked, the, the chef prepared them mm. and then brought them to our table specifically for us. Mm. It was incredible, it's incredible mm. stuff. So imagine going to a place for 15 bucks where you can drink as much as you want and eat really, really delicious fancy food. I hope you enjoyed the video guys. Uh, before I go, I hate to remind people because I see this, oh, I see this all the time, these unbelievably audacious people will like take off their shirt and run around the house screaming like, please like this before the people have watched the video. So now I can ask that you you finished the video already, guys. Congratulations, you made it to the end. <laughs> if you did like it, please uh, click that like button down below because it goes into the YouTube algorithm and I feel like people just blindly tell people to smash the like button, but it actually goes into the algorithm if this video is going to be popular in the future. If the video is popular, we make more ad revenue, just being totally honest with you guys. And that really helps us because I do full-time video production now for YouTube. And if you guys enjoy the content, if you click that, that button, actually it tells YouTube, hey, this video is good. When those pile up, it actually shares the video out on the recommended bar. So a newer, newer and bigger audience can actually see the video because of people being generous enough to go down there and like and comment and do all that kind of stuff. So maybe you understand how it works now. Please like the video if you did. Tell your friends about it, share it out. And uh, yeah, I guess we'll catch you on the next one. Thumbs up. Ding, 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 ding. So you're doing this begging thing now. Oh, sorry. It's Yay. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Yay. <laughs> okay, so that's a wrap. <laughs>